Welcome to lesson 67. And in this lesson, you're going to be able to tell the difference between an independent and dependent variable. So while I model, you're going to look out for these three things. I want you to watch and think about how I can identify an independent and dependent variable in the real world scenario. How do I know I can tell the difference? And it's going to connect to things you've learned when you were younger with input and output tables. Then I want you to watch how I create a data table and use that to represent that relationship between X and Y. And you will see a difference with how my independent and dependent variables, where they are on the table. And you won't necessarily see me do this in this lesson, but in your practice, you will have to graph ordered pairs from that table. We've done that in plenty of lessons, so I'm not going to model it here. but. This is what we're working on for today that will demonstrate mastery that you know how to identify independent and dependent variables. Sin is buying beverages for a party that comes in packs of eight. Let P be the number of packages Sin buys and T be the total number of beverages. So I already know there's a relationship between the packs and the total number. Okay, and we have the equation T equals AP can be used to calculate the total number of beverages when the number of packages is known. Determine the independent and dependent variables in this scenario. Then make a table using the whole number of P less than six. So I want you to think for a minute, which one makes the other one happen? And let's use this equation to help us. T equals eight P. So where P is the number of packages. So every time I buy a package, I multiply it by eight to figure out the total. So just thinking about my system, when I have a package, I know I'm going to multiply it by eight and that's going to tell me what my total is. So my independent variable is P, the number of packages. Because once I know the number of packages, I'm going to figure out the total T. And it kind of helps in my rule. Like it, it's like an in and out, an in and out table input. I'm going to input the number of packages and my output is going to be the total I have. That's the direction. So my input are independent and my output are dependent. So that answers first one. Now, how do I fill out this table? I'm going to do the rule to figure out the total number of beverages. And I'm going to use substitution for that. So for example, I know that T is equal to eight P. So I'm going to put eight times that number of P. So eight times zero in the first one, I have zero beverages. I don't have any packages. So when P is one, so eight times one, now I have eight beverages. Okay. When, when eight is two, now I have 16 beverages. When eight is three, and I know I have 24. When eight is four, I have 32. And when eight is five, I have 40 beverages. So that's it. Key takeaways. If you're looking for the input and output, this will help me figure out which is independent. Your input is going to be independent and your output is the one that is dependent. So what you figure out afterwards and how do I fill out this table? All I'm doing is substituting for P. So I'm putting in this number. I'm doing this operation and that is giving me T my output. Hit pause so you can jot this down into your notes. Use the graph to determine which variable is the independent variable. So I'm thinking about independent. I know this would be my input when I think of my equation. All right. So what is this whole table about? Uh, it's about how much money we save and what are the two variables, the number of weeks and the amount of money. Okay. So those are my variables. So money saved is not an independent variable. It's an, it's what happens at the end. It is really my output. So which one is it the number of weeks or is it the amount of money, which creates the other one? So just looking at the table, I'm going to look at here's X and here's Y. So when there is one week and I want to put X weeks. So when there is one week, I have $30. That's how much money is saved. Okay. 
When there are two weeks, I have $60. When there are three weeks, I have $90 and so on. I can see a pattern already happening here. I can see that each week I'm adding an extra $30. So I see this, I see this really happening and it's, it's constant. So one, I'm seeing that I'm constantly adding 30 and I'm seeing that my data is also pretty consistent. It doesn't change. So I'm always adding 30. So $30, I added another 30, adding another 30, I'm adding another 30. Every single week that goes by, I'm adding another 30. So in this case, I will tell you that the independent variable is over here because what is happening every week I save $30. That's the story that this graph is telling me every week. $30 is saved. So that's what's independent, the number of weeks and my dependent variable would be over here. It's my output. So if I put in the number of weeks, I can figure out how much money I have. That is the rule. And I can see my rule as if X is weeks, 30 times the weeks gives me my Y, my total. Total saved. X equals weeks. Y tells me total saved. So there's my story. So when you're looking at tables, math marbles, your independent variable is going to be right over here. It's what's telling the story over time. So my number of weeks and then my dependent variable is going to be right over here. And you're going to look at what the story is telling you. you know, if you see a straight line happening, if you see a proportional relationship, it will be constant. And you'll also notice it in your work over here that the differences in the numbers will be the same, that it will be constant. And this we call a constant difference. So that was a lot of information. We're going to keep practicing with this information, with this task and identifying which is the independent. So hit pause. Jot this down in your notes and practice saying the logic and asking questions to figure out which is the number you would input to figure out the other one. <laughs>